Former President Trump faces 91 counts across four criminal cases right now, but a separate civil case will go to court now, according to a judge's decision yesterday, this Monday, in two days. The witnesses could include President Trump, his two oldest sons, Don Jr. and Eric, who have both been involved in his business dealings. The former president is accused in this case of financial fraud. He claims that he has done nothing wrong. His lawyers say that they will absolutely appeal this case. But Trump could, in this case, lose the famous Trump Tower and many of his iconic New York properties. Former federal prosecutor Andy McCarthy calls that the corporate death penalty has a lot of questions about the legality of this case. He's standing by. But first, to Lauren Green, reporting live from New York. Hi, Lauren. Hey, Martha. Well, you know, of all the lawsuits against Donald Trump, this one targets his core identity, his real estate empire. Yesterday, a New York appeals court judge rejected the former president's bid to delay the civil case brought by the state attorney general. So the non-jury trial is set to start Monday. The $250 million case brought by New York's AG Letitia James is against Trump, his eldest sons, Eric, Donald Trump Jr., and other Trump organization executives. It accuses them of fraudulent business practices. And on Tuesday, the judge basically agreed, ruling that Trump committed years of fraud by grossly overestimating his real estate holdings, accusing him of false and misleading asset valuations, including the value of his Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida, overstating its value by as much as 2,300 percent on one financial statement. This investigation revealed that Donald Trump engaged in years of illegal conduct to inflate his net worth, to achieve, to deceive banks and the people of the great state of New York. Well, Trump has called this a political witch hunt. It's one of six cases, both civil and criminal, he's facing. In this case, the punitive penalty is only the start. The attorney general seeks to permanently bar Trump from serving as an officer or director of any New York corporation registered and or licensed in the state and also bar him from acquiring real estate for five years. This is a vindictive and self-serving fishing expedition, the likes of which this country has perhaps never seen before. Now, Trump is not required to attend the trial, but he could be called as a witness, one of 27 on the government's list. The trial is expected to last through the month of December. Martha? Stunning. Uh, Lauren, thank you very much. Let's bring in Andy McCarthy, former assistant U.S. attorney and a Fox News contributor. Andy, I, I read through this. I'm trying to understand it. First of all, who, who is the injured party here? It says that, that he deceived the banks and the people of the state of New York. Explain, if you can. This is the problem, Martha. Nobody really was deceived. There's not a single victim here. There's not a single transaction where they can bring somebody in who said, you know, Trump missed a payment or he didn't pay an insurance premium or there was some uh, loan he didn't pay back. Nobody got deceived. And I think the important thing here to, to bear in mind, other than the monstrousness of this statute where you can uh, basically ruin somebody on the basis of no proof of fraud, no proof of fraudulent intent, no proof of, of fraudulent impact. Um, the, the thing to bear in mind is when you're playing in the, in, the, in the league that Trump was playing in, everybody's a sophisticated financial actor. So, you know, if I go in and I say, I'm worth $2 billion, they don't like take my word for it and say, well, if you say so, um, you know, they go out and do their due diligence and, that's undoubtedly the reason why nobody actually got taken here. Exactly. That's what I find so shocking about this case, because these are banks and insurance uh, entities that have valuation groups. I mean, that's what they do. So when someone comes to them for a loan and says, my property's worth X, they check it out. They don't just take their word for it, as you rightly say, Andy. And also, I, you know, the Mar-a-Lago valuation, I, I think the judge sounds like he was way off. I mean, you can find like a small house with three bedrooms that goes for $18 million these days in Palm Beach. So uh, that's a 21 acre property. But, you know, so my question is, and let's put up on the screen some of these New York properties that he may lose. What what actually would he lose? The, the ability to have this company? I mean, what is at stake here for him? Well, everything, Martha. I mean, he can't, he won't be able to do business in New York. And as Lauren said in her report, 
the major part of this case that's going to, this is like Alice in Wonderland, the major part of the case that's going to trial Monday is already over. He lost. Uh, the judge ruled against him on one cause of action, which is the biggest one in the case, and entered summary judgment for the state. They want to take away and are taking away his certificates of doing business. And now we have the trial where he's looking at other counts, or I, I'm a criminal law guy, so I say counts. These are causes of action in a civil case. At the end, he could be he could lose two hundred and fifty million dollars in damages, but also lose any ability to do yeah. business in New York, where his business conglomerate's been headquartered for decades. So let I just want to play this soundbite from 2018. This is Letitia James, who is overseeing this case, now the Attorney General of New York. Watch what she said about him. Uh, the judge has also said very negative things. Watch this. I say one name, Donald Trump. That should motivate you. Will you, will you sue him for us? Oh, we're going to definitely sue him. We're going to be a real pain in the ass. He's going to know my name personally. Yeah, so that's lovely, uh, coming from an attorney yeah. general. So w what happens here? It, did, does the Supreme Court look at this case potentially? I mean, it, it seems very unusual, Andy. Yeah, well, I, I would say, Martha, in a, let's say you had a criminal case, because that's my side of the street, right? If you had somebody who jaywalked or committed some petty offense and you sentenced them to 20 years in prison, the lawyers would be right into the appellate court saying that this was an Eighth Amendment violation, that the, that the punishment was so out of whack compared to what the offense was that that shouldn't be able to stand constitutionally. And to me, this is the civil version of that. You have a situation where nobody got harmed. And as far as Letitia James is concerned, the, the prosecutors looked at that and decided, even in New York, that they couldn't bring a criminal case okay. based on this stuff. Andy, I got to jump it, in. We've got just, some breaking news. Andy McCarthy, thank you so much. Great to have you with us today. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.